Dating because I'm really excited for the upcoming Contra 3 run. It was one of my first games ever, although back then I played the European version that has robots instead of the cool Rambos. As a game developer, it was so cool to see our game Minute played at GDQX 2018. It's not part of SGDQ, but Half Minute Hero will do the trick. Great job to everyone who's part of the event. Thanks so much, and greetings from Berlin. And with that, it is now time for Jackal. Guys, take it away. What's up, SGDQ? My name is Super Pitfro. This is my partner in crime, Rat Dog. On the couch, we have Avalonith. He's a Jackal runner. We have Death Taxes on 64. He's a runner of various NES games. And then we have Angry Lynx, the King of Contra. He's going to be doing some uh, commentary for us, and then I'll chime in. And yeah. So the countdown is going to start in about 11 seconds after we press start. So. Give you a countdown in about three seconds. Three, two, one. All right, this is Jackal. So on the first stage, you're going to see somebody just kind of scrolling the screen for the first player, while the second player kind of lags back and grabs the power-ups out of the sheds. Um, and these are missile upgrades that cause the power-up to be faster and a little more powerful. So that's kind of the gist of the first stage. Otherwise, they just want to keep the screen scrolling as much as possible. And you will notice that they try to shoot the least amount of possible as well to reduce lag. So that's kind of the whole recipe for the run, in a sense. Um, they'll switch roles on the second stage, as you'll see, and someone else will collect the power-ups. But in the meantime, it's just getting one person with that big missile power-up. Additionally, every sprite that you see on the screen causes lag. So they're going to do their best to kill every enemy that they come across to, to make the game run faster. And uh, it's kind of funny because a lot of times two-player categories will be faster in games, but since this game lags so much with two people, it actually ends up just being slower most of the time. Yep. Kind of interesting. So here we have the first boss. It's these four tanks that come out. You can usually kind of predict their patterns based on where the first one pops up, and they'll take care of it real quick. Perfect. Here. Here. <laughs> So here you'll see that they're switching the roles. Someone else is leading, and then now the other player, the first player, will be getting the power-ups. And it's pretty standard just lag reduction strats here. Just kind of make your way through without getting shot by the stray bullets and take out as many tanks and turrets uh, as soon as possible. You'll yeah. see some planes come in here too, dropping some bombs. Uh, the Jeeps do only take one hit, so any hit to them is uh, deadly. There's a cool little skip coming up here where you blow up this pillar and pass through it. There it is. Pretty simple little trick, but it saves Watch some time. <laughs> All right, this part coming up is real laggy. <laughs> so you can see the game slowing down as there's a massive number of sprites on the screen. And they're just coming up on the second boss now. Just these kind of Medusa head statue things that shoot missiles. So you can see they're going to spread out and just take care of them real quick. It's pretty, pretty simple, straightforward boss. Nice. nice. Yeah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> this battle will make your blood boil. <laughs> So we get some, some water enemies on this stage added into the mix. You'll see some like submarines and battleship type looking things. So you got to be aware of the water hazards because those things will lag up the screen too. There's one now. And then here you got to be real careful to shoot to the left and the right to get rid of these enemies. Otherwise the screen lags terribly. And coming up we've got a, a tricky set of lasers that can be Kind of tough to squeeze through and, and time correctly around. Yeah. Uh, nice, they got through the first set. Yep. Good pattern on the second set yep. there. No deaths on the lasers is always good. And then here they're gonna snag this little icon. It just clears the whole screen. It's really nice. It's a cool little strat there. All right. 
And they're going to separate here to take out this battleship quickly. They're both going to take out three sets of turrets on their own if they can manage it. Nice. 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 Good stuff. <laughs> so we're in a bit of a swamp area here. Um, they got to be careful. They got to watch their tailpipes. There could be a missile coming at them, so it's going to be scary. Ooh! And they got through all right. If there's any donations you could read, this might be a good stage to do that. Absolutely. We've got a $5 donation from Peter216 saying, Longtime watcher, first time donating. Keep up the great charity work. And shout out to my West Coast Grave Shift watchers. We have $15 from Not Protagonist who says, Keep up the great work. Love you guys. And we also have $5 from Maxwell Kepler253 saying, Greetings from the UK. Good luck to all the dedicated runners at SGDQ 2019. So this helicopter boss on one player, you can kind of tell where it's going to appear. Yeah! On a two player, it's much different. <laughs> but it does only target one player, so the other player can just kind of sit behind it and unload on it to kill it pretty quickly. So I believe this is the second to last stage here. This one's pretty intense. There's some tight maneuvering you got to do next to the turrets coming up. So hopefully they can uh, stay synchronized and get through nice and easy. There's a one-up they just grabbed. So yeah, here's the part I'm talking about. You can see they make these tight squeezes next to these little barricades. And then they'll do one more here. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> One thing, if you didn't notice, the uh, machine gun attack always shoots straight up. So you can't change the direction of that attack. And that's going to come in handy later. Yep. There's a, a quick kill for this boss, and we'll, we'll see if they get it. They're going to try and position themselves and shoot all four of these doors before any of them have a chance to close up again. I oh, didn't quite get it, it's though. Like they missed one. This means we get to hear the great music a little longer. Yep. Yeah! All right, we're coming on the last stage here. This stage has a, a lot of lag. It's going to be a lot of lag reduction going on, but even still, it's just going to kind of slow down. They're going to try to get on a specific pixel here. Yeah. Looks like they got it. The faster boost there. Yep. Those gray Jeeps can be a menace, so you really want to take care of them as soon as possible. If you don't kill them, they just continue to follow you throughout the stage. And they purposely stayed low there so that turret would spawn at a certain time and not kill them. Take out a little nice. missile launch here. Here we have the gauntlet of death. As you can see. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a very tricky spot to get through. They're through it now, though. That's good. And coming up on the final boss, which is the, I think the only RNG, one of the only RNG elements in this game. Pretty it's much. A, it's a pretty big one. So it's going to be, it's 13 shots total to take out this base. And once they destroy the base, this awful tank will appear that is very much an RNG nightmare. Mm -hmm. But this is where you'll see those bullets come into effect with the straightforward shots. So they're going to really start mashing here. This is the, I think the only point in the run where mashing is really critical, but it's really critical here. And you can see that the, the pattern on this tank is pretty unpredictable. So they're just going to do their best to stay out of the way of that giant cannon. And, and time. time. Oh, there we go. That's good. Sub 830, that's really good. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, that's uh, Jackal, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, short and sweet run. Good job, guys. Yeah, just want to say thanks to SGDQ for having us, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Thanks. <laughs> I think we need a big yeah for that awesome Jacko run. There's a $20 donation that came in here. A little bit of a straggler left from the Marble Madness run, but it's from Sushi Elemental, who says, I'm nominating Marble Madness as the best orb. We might have to agree with that one. And while we've been enjoying some of these amazing remixes, we have a $15 donation from Lost Dragonist that said, I just had to donate for the killer tunes between each run. Well, we've also got a number of amazing prizes that you can donate for as well. You can see them scrolling across the screen there. That's Nestworks Volume 1. A $10 single donation will get you in for that, as well as those Marble Madness acrylic prints. I love them, but I mean, I had so much trouble with the, with the silly stage growing up. I, I don't know that I could hang those in my wall. I'd have to put them somewhere that, that I could look at them, you know, when I'm raging at a game or two. We've also got the Bit Brigade Metroid Vinyl, a $5 minimum donation will get you in for that as well. And the NES Wood Burned Coasters, those are incredible. A $10 donation will get you in for those. And of course, while we're talking about prizes, should mention, of course, the grand prize, the Legend of Zelda-themed replica Master Sword and Hylian Shield provided by Heroic Replicas. Minimum donation amount is $200 for that one. The full prize information can be viewed in the tracker, and the official rules are on the website. It's an unbelievable prize. A $200 cumulative donation throughout the marathon gets you in for that Legend of Zelda-themed replica Master Sword and Hylian Shield provided by Heroic Replicas. And we're seeing some hype coming in for the co-op block as well. We've got a $100 anonymous donation. Thank you very much, anonymous.
Also a reminder that all of the money we're raising here at SGDQ 2019 is going toward Doctors Without Borders, an international independent medical humanitarian organization that delivered emergency aid to people affected by armed conflict, epidemics, malnutrition, natural disasters, and exclusion from healthcare in over 70 countries in 2018. On any given day, thousands of individuals representing dozens of nationalities can be found providing assistance to people caught in crises around the world. They're doctors, nurses, logistics experts, administrators, epidemiologists, laboratory technicians, mental health professionals, and others who work together in accordance with MSF's guiding principles of humanitarian action and medical ethics. The organization received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1999. 